failing her Maggie test right now. So a few months ago, like kind of actually a lot of months ago, <laughs> I reached out to a bunch of my artist friends about their favorite mixed media layers, layering, I was going to say layering process, but layers. And I got this awesome, overwhelming response. And I made this packet up. So I don't know if you know, if you go back just two years, um, I came up with what I call my hamburger mixed media system and it's seven layers. Um, I, it's like my favorite way to do mixed media. I've been doing it for years before, uh, before I finally like put it together in a video. Long story short, that became a whole video series on YouTube. It became a book. I have, oh my gosh, Maggie, how many, how many? Like I have like almost 30 hamburger style mixed media projects that I teach in my mixed media society at Awesome Art School. I just love it. But that's still only one way to layer. And there's like a million other great ways to layer art supplies too. So by reaching out to my friends, because I can't possibly know what they all are. And I don't have every single art supply in the whole world. Although sometimes it definitely feels like I do. I made what's called a hot dog packet. Because also my hamburger method has like seven layers and the hot dog is only four. So it's less is more. But these artists that I spoke to and gave me their favorite layers, actually the name of the art supplies and in what order, is awesome. It's like a whole recipe for awesomeness. I actually have, it's a 32 page PDF. I think, oh my God, my kids are playing and laughing so hard. Um, I think, I think 28 of those are actual different layers. I'm gonna do projects all over YouTube based on these little, these layers. Um, I also have this set up where if you want the PDF packet, you can have it. Just let me know in the comments and I will drop you a link and you can grab it. It's super cool. So like I was saying, we have, I actually made, I'm such a dork. I actually put mine into this whole binder. Let me turn my camera around. I'll show you. Here is my binder. And as you can see, here's like what kind of what and why. And then here is the rundown. So here, the plate is the substrate. The bun is your, really your main ingredient. Okay, so this is like canvas or paper, wood, art journal, whatever, main ingredient. Then your secondary ingredient. And then your third, which I call the toppings. And um, there's a little more explainer information. So this is all part of this packet. I, I'm such a dork, but I love like Office Max and I actually just organized this all by number. And um, so the first project, this is actually already on YouTube. You can actually find this um, project. The real time is in my Mixed Media Society because it's uh, quite a lengthy lesson. But here's a perfect example. The plate, I did it in my art journal. The main ingredient is always the bun. It holds everything together. And so in this case, this is fountain pen ink by Noodlers. There's me. There's uh, colored pencils is the hot dog. That's the second main ingredient, but it's used less than the first one. And then the toppings on top that what I used to finish it off are was my Pentel uh, pocket brush pen. Okay, so there, this is a great example and one, and I'll link it here. You can just actually click the eye in the corner of the screen right here and you can actually um, go and check that out. And then number two is, um, oh, Tara. She's a friend of mine. She was actually a part of my art school for a while and she's gone off to do bigger and better things on her own. And this is another example. So watercolor paper, bun is watercolors, colored pencils, and then wax pastels on top. Now here's a fun thing is that I very purposefully, when I was reaching out to my friends, I got rid of, not my friends, I got rid of projects that repeated. So these 28 projects or 30 or however many there are in here are all different. And I did that on purpose because we don't, we don't want, you know, eight of the same things. I wanted different layers. So this is like a whole booklet of possibilities and different ways that we can layer our things. So, and I love it too, because then you also have an example. Oh, it's so good. So again, here, here's cardboard. Like that's an ingenious use of reusing or upcycling something. Stibble all one of my personal all-time favorite art supplies. Then she uses pan pastels and then paint pen. So I've never done a hot dog in this order or this form before. So I'm super excited to try these. So here on YouTube, this is going to be a whole series and I'm going to go through these one by one and do some projects. Some will be in all real time. Some will be time lapse. Just depends on the, the, the breadth of these. But anyways, this whole packet, um, there's a lot to, um, to explore. 
I'm in here a bunch of times just because I'm the hostess with the mostest and I have done a huge breadth of, um, of mixed media projects in my life and I was able to come in personally kind of fill in any any holes that might have been missing. So anyways, if you want this, let me know. You can have it. And then today, and I'm going to go in order just to challenge myself and for those following along. So this one I said is already done. So the next one is going to be this one. Um, so watercolor paper and get out your supplies. If you want to kind of craft along with me, then we'll get watercolors, color pencils, and wax pastels. I don't even have these. I have to go buy them. I don't even have these yet. I'm so excited. So um, yeah, well, yeah, fast forward one second and, and let's begin. All right, so in order for us to do our project today, I need to run a Jerry's Honorama and grab some Neo Color ones, okay? We're going to Raleigh, let's go. All right, so I'm really excited for right now. So I just went to Jerry's, they only had a small set of the Caran d'Ache um, Neo Color ones, and what's also so annoying is that almost half of the top tips are already broken, which is a little soul crushing because I like like a fresh new art supply, but whatever, I have to move on. So here again, here is our hot dog of the day. We have watercolor paper, so I'm just getting everything ready here. Let's get a new sheet. This is a lesson I just completed for my mixed media society members. Put that aside. Okay, I have a great new sheet right here. So that's gonna be our plate. All right, so the bun, we're gonna do watercolors. So um, just to make things really quick and easy, I have my favorite little cheater skin tone set, which is the complexion set by Prima. And I'll probably have some other colors too. So that's gonna be our bun. And then I have my colored pencils are the hot dog. So that goes on top. So here is my big bucket of water, of not watercolor, just color pencils. And then I have my wax pastels, which are what I just purchased, which again are the Neo Color ones. Now, what's more popular in the mixed media world is not Neo Color one, but Neo Color twos, and those are the water soluble ones. I have those as well. But we're using this these today. I'm so excited. I've never used them before. I think they're just basically like fine art. They're crayons. They're just straightforward crayons, but I'm excited to see like how pigmented they are um, and just love me a new art supply, so I'm not sorry. Okay, so this is the hot dog that we're working from. Again, thanks to Tara Peel for giving us our this awesome, her awesome little order of events here. Very excited to get started. So I just randomly went to Pinterest in about two seconds. Um, I love drawing faces, so here we go. Um, I'm, this is just going to be like a quick and dirty experiment. I'm much more interested in the art supplies for this project and the layering than I am about making this a perfect project. So I'm going to do a, again, like a kind of a rush, a rush rough and dirty by the way I couldn't this uh, reference image was uploaded directly by the user but the user um, this is not art from them so I don't know who the artist is such a love-hate relationship because of things like that for Pinterest Ugh, it's so frustrating but I'm just like using this for fun today I'm not selling this piece I'm not I'm just this is like for my own benefit to do this exercise to really test out this hot dog layer layering system and god i just also love his chunky hair chunks whoever this artist is it's a digital art i also have a weird fascination i love to challenge myself to um recreate digital art with traditional materials it's like a it's like a weird just really enjoy the challenge of that because I know I can't do art on, on digitally and I don't care to learn it, but I do love to see if I can like how I can recreate it in traditional materials. Always fascinates me to see if I can do it. So here's just, again, I'm just doing a rough, really, really quick sketch. I just think this guy was instantly fascinating so I'm going to try to draw him as fast as I can because that is not what we are here for 
Um, if you do want to learn to draw, I have a, actually a dedicated uh, YouTube channel just for drawing because it's really two separate, completely separate skills. Oh my God, I love his deep eye issues. <laughs> I love them so much and his sculpted nose is magnificent. So again, I'm, I'm going as fast as I can uh, because I care much more about the layering than I care about the process of drawing. And I could have actually just transferred him on there. Oh, I need to give him a bigger chin than that. But here we go, and his freaking cheekbone is amazing. Look at his awesome sculpted ear, also amazing. <laughs> There's the other side of his nose. So what I'm really excited about also is um, his, oh my God, his, he looks like his facial features are like, like out of clay or something. They're so, they're so, so totally three dimensional. All right, one eye left to go and then we can start this brow bone with all the shading. Mm, he's got super girly lashes. Let's see how that translates. And then again, his eyes are like super glow. All right, so as long as, as soon as I have a, a, a good enough rendition here, we can, we can start adding the art supplies. Oh, he looks, <laughs> He looks like a little, like a meth addict, a little pissed off more in mine. He's like hot in my reference. And the, <laughs> my rendition is uh, a, like a not so friendly version. <laughs> but I don't care. It's just really fun. I just want to make sure I don't have 89 lines. Okay, now he looks like he got punched in the side of the head. Let's bring in that cheekbone a little bit. <laughs> And let me just make sure I have kind of something going for his shirt. Doesn't even need to look like this. He's got a tie situation, blah, 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 something like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going for accuracy. I'm going for fun. And again, art supply exploration. All right. I did that in like five minutes. Okay, I was going as fast as I possibly could. So again, we did uh, our bun is the watercolor paper. Now we're gonna do our, uh, sorry, our plate is the watercolor paper. And now I'm gonna do, um, so the watercolor is the base, is the base layer. So I'm gonna keep it fairly, what's the word, tame, I guess because I want to try using the other layers to build out some of the dimension and whatnot, and not so much. His ear has like 59,000 lines, uh, much more, more so than just using the watercolors. So I don't, this ear is so crazy. So I think what I'll do is just do, this is cold press. I'm gonna, again, keep these kind of, um, Basic. This brush is from Polina Bright, and I am in love with her brushes. I'm in love with her Instagram feed. She is, I am way busy for social media, but pretty much when I hop on Instagram, um, she's the one person I really keep tabs of. Because she, um, I, her art is amazing. Her brushes are amazing. I talked about her before, and on uh, YouTube, I just really can't really say enough things awesome about her. Everything. She is in Australia, um, so her brushes, when you order them in the states, don't come quickly, but they do come, and they are uh, a really good value, and they're they're just an insanely awesome brush. So they are my favorite. They are my favorites to use. So I'm just putting down one quick layer of chant. And again, this is like a basic set of skin colors. 
I'm a super lazy watercolorist. I just like to get my colors down quick. I don't like to spend a lot of time mixing. I'm, like I said, I'm like self-proposed lazy person. I'm just gonna put some main darker colors in the darker spaces for layer one. It's pretty quick and dirty. All right, so I'm gonna dry that with my hair dryer and then we'll just keep going. That's dry, we're gonna do a quick, I'm not doing all of the dimension and everything in watercolor because I wanna make sure I am actually using the darker like colors from the other mediums. It's all about the layering, but I'm gonna do a quick swath. The first one was Chant, this is Namaste, which is right next door to Chant on my little palette palette of love so where's when i'm looking at this reference it's like where are the most striking shadows that i see is where i'm aiming for this layer to be also if you want to learn how to draw dudes i do have a book called how to draw fun fab fellas and it is um it's a kind of underrated awesome little resource it has how to draw them in um, profile and three-quarter portrait. Like this one is a three-quarter portrait and front on. So if you're like, how does she do all the like angulars? Now I do have a reference, but this book will actually teach you how to draw them from scratch. It's out of reference and it's made for beginners. So it's a really, it's a really good resource. If I do say so myself. It's my worst selling book, probably because it's guys and everybody wants to draw girls. But for those of you that do want to draw guys, do have a book that will help you out with that. And then this neck is super dark. All right, so that's just kind of like blocked in the main areas of drama. She was hair something so fun. Um, this cobalt blue is like calling my name. All right, we lost our overhead cam there. I actually completely forgot that I was <laughs> filming there. <laughs> so, all right, let's keep going. So I'm gonna do this one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, this is cobalt blue violet. This is from Daniel Smith. Heck yes. Now he's just, he's screaming blue hair to me. Oh, yes. Heck yes. Again, this whole exercise is one in quick and dirty techniques for layering with the hot dog. I can't wait to get to the final layer. That's what I'm rushing towards. because that's where all the, the impact gets to go. So we're just doing a quick base layer in this. And then the details and the depth and the layering are gonna come from the top of the hot dog layers. So for instance, we could do the individual strands. We could do with the colored pencils, right? Quick and easy. And then we could do some larger shading sections with the Neo Color Ones because they are just a broader tip. And my have a real broad tip because all the freaking tips broke off. <laughs> at some point. Oh, I'm gonna make him have the same color eyebrows. It's his hair, that's how you know he's a natural blue haired person. Right? The eyebrows always match. <laughs> All right. Oh, I have green out, so let's make him some green eyes. Although I don't really have a good eye green, I'll use this one. What is this? Amazonia. Ooh, let's do cobalt. I never use this color, even though I've 
always have it. So, so grumpy. <laughs> He's so grumpy. All right, let's do his shirt. I, I just, I'm just gonna use whatever. Um, let's see. How about do 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 do? It's a good one. Do you see green? Sure. Oh, I just have this tiny little swirl. I feel bad, honestly, using it. Don't have a lot here. I love little challenges like this, and I love YouTube for this for me personally because I have so many lessons that I always need to be crafting. YouTube is super like a playground. <laughs> it gets to be my playground where I get to like experiment and have fun. I don't have the pressure of making a perfect lesson that everyone has to be following in real time all the time because a lot of times that's not even what YouTube is used for. It's just kind of like to get the gist of something. I think very few people actually follow along in real time. I don't know where his shirt is over here. My gobbledygook drawing is sort of messing it all up. Sure, that looks awesome. And my mantra, good enough. Oh, you know what he does need though is a little lip action. Um, I'm gonna actually just make that the skin color for right now. I don't like to make men's lips like lippy, too lippy color. Oh my God, he's so badass. I don't know what color this is, but I then he needs like a one, maybe I'll do like a brown. Oh, here we go, I'll just use this. We'll use this bear for his jacket. And I now realize he's also missing his shoulder should be like here. Now I should have waited for it to dry because it's now blending with the green, but I really don't really care about his clothes all that much. Just kind of doing it to fill the paper. Because again, our main concern is his super cool, awesome face. Yes, well, he's so grumpy. I tagged his face with some weird color of something. Awesome possum. And there we go. Just putting anything there basically. And then he needs some tie color as well. Maybe we'll just use the wax um, crayons for those also. All right, I'm gonna dry this. We're gonna be back and we're gonna go to layer two, which is the color pencils. I'm so excited. Now I do have to say, just as in my own experience, I would typically do the bigger areas first with probably the crayons and then end with color pencils because the way that I normally do my work, I kind of work biggest to smallest. So like the biggest area is the watercolors and the smallest little details would be done with the water, with the color pencils at the end because that I usually, again, go from biggest area to smallest area. But that's not what Trace, Tara said her hot dog was. So I'm gonna do it in the order that she said anyways. But I do think um, if I was leading a class on this, I would probably, I would probably go wax first and then pencils. And I'm using Prismacolor pencils because they are also wax based. So like materials always work well with other like materials. So I know I'm kind of setting myself up for success. So, um, because, um, because this is, uh, because color pencils is number two on the list, I'm going to do my little detail work. Next, he's so mad, it makes me so laugh so hard that he's so mad. So let's see, what are the things on his face that can be done with colored pencils over? So we're adding some dimension and kind of hair to his eyebrows. Add these little pencil strokes here. And I just took colors that were very similar to the colors that I already had for the watercolor. And again, this is like a quick and dirty demonstration. So I'm not doing this necessarily in the same manner that I would be doing like a class or something. But 
color pencils always works awesome on top of watercolor. So the areas underneath underneath where it's shaded can always be darker. And you can also get kind of the look of strands. Reference is so fun. I can kind of be dark in there. <laughs> it's like so funny. I love it. Just adding in. <laughs> in your strands. That somehow made his hair look enormous. Like defining it. <laughs> That's so funny. And then, um, let's see, going in and really beefing up like his, uh, the areas where there's shading. Again, it's so flippin' fun. Oh, he's got a lot more shading in his eye areas. And also here. And I'm just looking to that reference to tell me where to go. Here, oh, that's going to be like black, actually. And this is the darkest. So fun. And yeah, over here. And on and over his eye is going to be just straight up black as well. So under the nose on this side of his nose and again this area is literally black i don't have the black out right now but this just adds to the overall definition of this amazing dude with his amazing dude i think we can all all agree on that. So yeah, so we got our pencil going inside here and back here. It's really and my also I should say the cold press paper too adds a ton um, of texture so if I had done this on hot press paper it would actually look really different that's actually important distinction to me <laughs> he's totally cracking me up so then if these and if some of these areas are too like rough the transition between the highlighted area and the shaded region that's when you this is what color pencils is super good for is you can take those and really work on easing the transitions from one to the other kind of like that abrupt transition myself but that's a great another use of color pencils awesome and then just quick and dirty for his clothes again we have his just grab matching colors Don't even know where his tie is. I don't really understand his clothes whatsoever, <laughs> but so fun. Uh, yeah. Got his little overcoat here. And even the whole style of this piece is just loose and crazy. Oh, 
All right, so then we had our step two, right, was the colored pencils. That was the hot dog. And then, so, and then sitting on top are going to finally, I'm so excited, are finally going to be the wax crayons that I've been waiting, dying, and rushing to get to for this entire video. Yes. Okay. I can't believe I can't use the tips of anything. So I'm going to just grab the tip of the purple and actually just see how this goes on. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it's like a, it's just very crayony, which is good. And again, though, the texture of that, of the paper is, affects the look of the piece like a ton as well. But I mean, how fun is using crayons and I'm sure, and I didn't look into it, but I'm sure because this is a fine art supply, um, that this is, I'm sure these are light fast and have all the goodness because Karen Dash uh, does not mess around when it comes to their art supplies. And I'm gonna try the white. This is a good test too because, oh yeah. Oh, it sits right on top, that's super good. Get some kind of dimension going that way. There's nothing worse than a a, a white that isn't opaque. Kind of goes this way. So that's like a big test. <laughs> there, is, there is absolutely so ridiculous. I love it. And I think too, he needs some. He needs a background around him as well. We're going to do that next for sure. All right. Same thing. I want to do like a larger area because I just want to feel like I'm coloring with crayons. Yes. Oh, yes. So satisfying. And it's, you know, it's quicker and dirtier than even the colored pencils, so I could definitely see uh, myself using these a ton. Here's the black. Let's see what we can do with that black. Some shading in here. Oh, let's give him a black tie. I kind of want to see what the black looks like on its own. But again, it's a little bit hard to decipher because of the texture of the paper. See how the cold press is so bumpy, lumpy? So that hugely affects uh, the kind of the, the level of detail that you can get. And so which in that case, I would probably switch back to a color pencil so you can get those real defined kind of thick lines. But I really want to mess around with this. He's got very girly lashes. What else was black right here? It was like seriously was black. The shadow. And the back here was, and even in his ear. He's got all sorts of you know what else we can use? Go back to our colored pencils to really put in the, the more defined areas. Yes, he is super duper badass. All right, so we have our hot dog layering. Look at his hair. <laughs> I've never seen anything so crazy ever. All right, I'm gonna do a great big quick, uh, I'm gonna do a great big quick background and then I'm gonna add my own topping uh, on top. So we're not, we're not quite done. Just give me one more minute. Whenever I need a super bold, amazing background. I pull out my noodlers fountain pen inks. 
This color is called Bad Gator. And I think it's gonna be the perfect backdrop to this crazy hair and dude situation. I, it's, uh, yeah, it's fountain pen ink, but I actually really enjoy just painting with it as if it was not fountain pen ink. Now my paper is like a sponge, um, which is really seriously soaking it up. I actually feel like my poor paint is getting like leached into it. Um, but this guy is such a bold, crazy graphic look. I figured uh, he's kind of asking for a bold, crazy graphic background as well. And here again is how mixed media just takes on a true life of its own um, and why trying things is always the best way to experience or test out to see for yourself kind of what works and why, what might not work. So I've never tried my fountain pen ink. Um, oh, that's not true. Not like this, where I have just huge, huge swaths of it. This is to Stonehenge uh, cold press, and it's super absorbent, absorbent. And this looks very different on hot press paper than it does on smooth press. So again, in this particular project, uh, a lot of this texture is greatly influencing kind of the look at the weird kind of splotchy splotches we get too because of the nature of the paper not even the art supply itself it's actually really fascinating so he's got this really crazy bold graphic look and then the way that i finish 99 percent of my projects i'm so addicted to this one art supply and if all my students or any of my students from Arts of Smart School are watching this, they're like, oh my God, is she getting out her Pentel pocket brush pen? And the answer would be yes, I am. It's my favorite. Uh, this one, I think I'm actually running out of ink in this one. My yesterday got derailed and I meant to add new ink cartridges. You can also just use a fine watercolor brush and black ink but I am just forever an outliner and I need to outline my work so badly. <laughs> I just, it never feels finished. Uh, and it also won't have that level of texture to it. Oh, I just, you know, put my whole hand inside the wet ink. So it's nice because it gives a nice um, outline. It, I like a crisp edge. And so this gives it to us. Now, just so you know, most fountain pen ink is super water soluble. So, so if I took another water brush, it could actually like activate and spread this out if you wanted to. Anyone is even crafting along with us today. Oh, he's so cool and badassy. So here is my favorite little doodle ending to pretty much all of my uh, face drawing projects that I do. Just love it. It's a nice crisp edge. And here we go. So, hot dog. <clears throat> awesome. New art supply. Also awesome. And again, if you want that PDF, let me know because I'm going to do a ton more of these because it's really, really fun. So, yeah. Um, so fun. Let me know if you have any questions um, about this or any other processes of mixed media or if you have questions about my hamburger system. Um, I've been doing that for years and years. 
And I'll link up to that too, um, so you can learn more about what the heck that is. And I hope you enjoyed this <clears throat> super cool, different lesson today. And I also have to say, I can't stop creating until I've had a little eye shine as well. Cause, cause, yeah, because, cause. <laughs> so yeah, so there is our dude. He's super badass. Thanks for the reference. And I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today about mixed media and sort of the, uh, just the possibilities. Because honestly, they are endless, but there are right and wrong ways to layer your art supplies. But this is definitely one of the right ways. So I hope you got a lot out of this for today's lesson. And I will see you soon with another fun one. Thanks.